Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about a subject that I actually have a lot of comments already about, and that is Gerber versus Essie. Now, these two American knife companies have a lot of similar mindset to their knives, at least some of their knives. Obviously, Gerber does make things like multi-tools, and, you know, Essie does make some other kind of wacky kind of survival tools. But by and large, you know, when it comes down to survival knives, both of these American companies have their own offerings that are about the same size, about the same weight, and similar in pricing. Now, Essie is a little bit more expensive, but today I wanted to talk about a few SE offerings versus a few Gerber offerings and really discuss why I think SE is the way to go and why you should ditch your Gerbers if you have them or why you shouldn't pick them in the first place. So of course I got the LMF2 versus the SE6. There is a pretty large size difference but you know they are reasonably similar priced and then I have the Prodigy versus the SE4. Now once again there is a little bit of a price gap but you could also figure the uh, Prodigy or strong arm. Uh, the Prodigy is just the one I like more than the strong arm, so that's why I figured I would throw it in this list. So as always, guys, before we get into this, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram if you want to see more behind the scenes of Alaskan Frontier 1. Okay, now let's actually talk about some knives. So first off, let's talk about the SE and really just jump into why I think that SE is better. So of course, these are both American made. So for that kind of regard or in that regard, they are pretty similar. They are both full tag, uh, except the LMF2, I wouldn't really consider a full tag knife because this pommel here is, it's not even actually connected to the tag of the blade. So that means that the tag ends somewhere in here, but it does not end at this pommel. So this pommel is metal, so it might give you the illusion that it is, you know, a part of the tag, and that's what it's kind of supposed to do, give you the illusion that it is, but it is not connected to the actual tag of the blade. It doesn't necessarily make it a weak knife, but it is not full tag, so when we're talking about full tag knives, it cannot be counted in that list, sadly. Uh, or maybe not sadly, depending on how you feel about that. But uh, anyways, so <clears throat> for the most part, you have full tag blades versus full tag USA made blades, but that's where really the differences end. When you jump over to SEs, you immediately get better handle materials, things such as Micarta or G10, depending on what you choose. You also have different options like this kind of tiger stripe G10 that is very, very grippy. It is cut, in fact, for grip, and or to give you more traction, I should say, it is already grippy. It just gives you more traction. In addition to that, you also have an upgraded steel. A lot of people do like the semi-stainless steel that 420HC is. Overall, it by and large, uh, so this is a semi stainless steel. It is a Chinese made steel, uh, 420HC, and depending on how it's heat treated, it can be well or it can do well. But as we have some clear examples like this LMF2 and even this uh, Prodigy, the 420HC that Gerber is producing is not very well heat treated, so it does end up losing an edge a lot sooner than you might expect and even the best 420 hc is not going to have a very high edge retention things like 1095 high carbon are not only better at holding an edge but the other thing is they are going to be a lot more shock resistant and a lot more durable to a lateral uh, torsion and so essentially if you do have to stab this knife into something and torque on it or use it as a pry bar which is never recommended by the way but if you have to do it for whatever survival purpose you can absolutely do it with 1095 and the most you're going to do is likely bend the steel and you can always bend it back subsequently so it is field repairable if you do damage the knife by bending it if you snap the tip off of your knife like this lmf2 you are not going to be able to repair it so that is a big difference in materials and build quality. Now, yes, you do give up some of that rust resistance that the semi-stainless 420HC has, but once again, with 
uh, SE, you do have a very, very durable kind of truck bed coating. And when I mean durable, I do really mean it. I mean, I have an SE3 that, you know, these two SEs have not seen as much use, but the SE3 that I have, I have absolutely, I've tried to destroy it. I made a video on trying to destroy it many years ago, and the coating absolutely wears like iron. I mean, it is a really solid coating. So if you're worried about rust resistance, so if you are worried about rust resistance, the SE4 is going to deliver pretty good rust resistance through its coating. Now, obviously the very cutting edge will not be as resistant because it's uncoated, but this is not a very huge deal. So that's kind of, you know, this big argument point that people have is, you know, oh, the, the 420HC is rust resistant or more rust resistant than 1095. And while that is true, this is not bare or, you know, this is not bare or stripped steel, you know, that is sitting exposed. This is coated and it's quality coated. The last big thing that you have going for SE is not only is it a very strong, robust design, you also have their no questions asked lifetime warranty. So if you do manage to break this knife, they are absolutely going to stand behind it. And that's in the past why I've talked about why SEs are more expensive is largely due to the fact that you are essentially kind of buying two SEs SEs at one time and so that uh, no questions asked warranty is if you do manage to break that knife they will replace it you send it in they'll send you a new one no questions asked so that is the primary reason why I do love SE and why I think that they are honestly the route to go now the last reason that I really like SE as opposed to Gerber is the fact that these are, as I mentioned in other videos, every SE knife, whether it's the Azula 2, Hoogless 2, the SE6, the SE4, SE3, SE5, you know, you name it, there's a lot of them out there, but every single SE is designed with survival in mind. Now, granted, the Hoogless and the Hoogless 2, you know, are designed for a little bit more jungle survival, hence their name Hoogless. Uh, it, but they are all designed with the express purpose of being survival knives. And the other thing that really draws me to Essie is the fact that these are designed by survivalists for survivalists. So what that means is the people that design these knives uh, have experience with search and rescue, with seer, with with search and rescue, with seer, and with wilderness survival as a whole, and in a multitude of environments. Once again, uh, you know, from the jungles to the forests of the lower 48. These people know what they're doing, they have field time, and so when they sit down to make a design like this, it's very purpose-driven, and it's a very, um, <laughs> It's very purpose-driven and it has a lot of experience behind it. Now, I'm not saying that the LMF2 per se is a knife that doesn't have any survival you know, expertise put into it, but it has a very different design and a different mindset. This LMF2, while it may be a solid-ish knife, it does lose its edge very quickly, I will say, but you know, while this knife may be a survival-ish knife, um, it's designed primarily as a pilot survival knife. So what this knife is designed for is not wilderness survival. It's designed to extract you out of a crashed aircraft, whether that be helicopter, whether that be, you know, jet or whatever. Probably not a jet because you likely die. <laughs> so forth so this knife is really an interesting blade because it's designed to extract you out of an aircraft but it's not really designed for wilderness survival it's very uh, mission focused and for that mission I think it would actually do okay like I don't think that this would present any issues because 
that's such a hyper focused role. Uh, like that's literally just extraction out of a crashed aircraft. And uh, unfortunately though, the problem with something like the LMF2 is once you get out of that aircraft, you know, after you've cut any electrified wires, you've cut any aluminum panels, you've broken any glass you need to, you know, it kind of leaves you with a subpar knife. Not to mention something that a lot of people don't talk about is because these, uh, serrations are on the blade the fixed sharpener here that is attached to the knife that is designed to be used with the blade when it does get dull as it would probably get dull driving it through aluminum especially being a softer steel uh once you do you know once you do sharpen it <clears throat> once you do get it to the sharpener uh the serrations will not be able to be sharpened on this sharpener so realistically you could only continue to sharpen about half of the blade if that maybe like 40 percent of the blade and 60% of the blade is just going to be whatever sharpness it is. So those are kind of some unfortunate sides of the LMF2 and uh, the Prodigy, you know, being essentially, the, the Prodigy is essentially just a carbon copy of the LMF2, just made a little bit smaller and it doesn't have the ridiculous pommel on it anymore, which is a good thing for me. It does kind of have this glass breaker sharpened thing, which might work, might not work, but uh, essentially the LMF2's smaller brother is the Prodigy, and unfortunately it does carry over the serrations, though it does not have a sharpener on its sheath, so. But either way, uh, you know, this knife is a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable, still using the same 420 steel though, and uh, while I would certainly carry the Prodigy over the LMF2, if for no other reason due to durability, but I do think that there's a lot of lack. Once again, there is no warranty. The uh, coating on these knives does wear incredibly fast. I'm not sure how well you know it'll pick up on the camera, but this uh, LMF2 which is the more expensive brother to the Prodigy, has a lot of coating wear. And I promise you guys, I have not really used this thing that hard yet. And like, it's, like I've said in past videos, I've already broken it a little bit and I've already worn off this coating quite a lot. Like this knife looks like it's been through hell and uh, I've barely even started with it. Which by the way, for those wondering, I will be doing a destruction test on the LMF2 because there are a lot of weak points that I would like to expose and I would like to show this knife uh, you know or show showcase those portions now I will say like I've said in this video this knife really is not designed for wilderness survival it is just pitched as a survival knife and as a pilot survival knife and uh, it is very purpose driven to extract you out of a vehicle uh, that is potentially downed or unusable but it is not really geared towards a wilderness survival and I think that that really kind of goes back to you know even when you just take a look at both of these knives you know if you had to pick one for specifically wilderness survival the SC4 or the SC6 you know does look like a far more useful blade for a few reasons one you do not have the serrations the serrations are largely useless in wilderness applications you also have your choil to choke up on so that you can get a better and closer uh, grasp on your very cutting edge so you can do more fine or pre precision detail work like feather sticking. You also have a very thick stock of 1095 and you have good traction. Now this does have good traction and a pretty comfortable grip but overall the SC4 is very very purpose driven for wilderness survival and self-reliance whereas this Gerber, uh, LMF2, Prodigy, and even the Strong Arm, because the Strong Arm is largely predicated off of the Prodigy. Uh, the Strong Arm is basically just the update to the Prodigy. So basically all of the history of the Strong Arm, the Prodigy, all stem from this LMF2. So that's why I keep featuring it and talking about it is because one, you can still buy LMF2s, uh, you can still buy Prodigies, but uh, they all kind of draw their lineage back from this pilot survival knife. So if that was the original intent of this blade uh, or that the original intention of this blade and that heritage is passed on to this blade and another blade and so on and so forth without any real revisions then essentially you just have another pilot survival knife that is not really apt for the wilderness like other knives not to mention these knives are also very heavy it's hard to communicate over a video how hefty these blades are but these knives in my opinion are unnecessarily heavy especially the LMF2 due to its weird kind of like glass breaking Pommel. Um, the SE6, while it still does weigh more than the LMF2, it feels far 
far more balanced and I think that's one thing to know when it comes to actual use of a tool is you know you can have a heavier knife but if it's really well balanced it will be less fatiguing whereas if you have a very hefty knife that is much smaller it will fatigue you out faster if it's not as well balanced so that's something that I really do give credit to the SE6 and the SE4 for that matter is that while they are hefty knives and uh, the SE6 definitely is a heavier blade than the LMF2 it is a very well balanced tool and this also helps hopefully elaborate of my hatred against Gerber once again a lot of people comment like why do I hate this knife company so much I really don't hate Gerber I'm just really trying to bring out and expose the weak points in these knives and their tools in hopes that they will hear these things and make adjustments because if no one ever challenges the poor designs or challenges the poor features of a knife then even to the extent that the knife company doesn't know how to change or how to improve their products so if you have a whole bunch of people saying this knife is awesome and it doesn't suck at all when they really think it does suck the company's never going to know how to adjust how to make it better how to improve their product. So anyways, that's why I'm so harsh on Gerber and why I keep bringing up other things like Mora, like SE, like K-Bar, and keep pulling these other examples and why I will continue to uh, until these knives, these Gerbers, improve. Anyways, as always, God bless and I'm out.